Of we think we might know what we're doing, but we're not sure. This is a friend's gun, and it was having an issue with the semi auto function. And the semi auto function, it was firing full auto, it wouldn't go semi auto. My suspicion was that it was a cutoff lever, which is this little dandy right here. So I'm going to zoom in real tight on it for you. I'm going to tell you, you can see that little piece right here, that's the cutoff lever. You can see it's nice and smoothly rounded. I doubt you'll be able to see, but don't want to mess up my gears hard right here. But there's actually a little burr that takes place that's occurring right here on that lip. You can hear me catch on it a little bit, where it has taken and pushed the metal down and molded it around. That cutoff lever right here is designed to catch, where's my sector gear, on this little bar right here. So that when the sector gear goes around, if it hits that, the cutoff lever, it just bumps that cutoff lever, slowing it down, allowing you to only shoot one round at a time. Because this is worn down so smooth, it's no longer bumping it, no longer slowing it down. So, we have bought a new one. I bought an SHS for a version 2 gearbox. Hopefully everything will work good on it. And you'll be able to see, once I get it out here, it came with several pieces. I think it was a whopping $4 to get this part to fix. So we've got your cutoff lever right here. If you compare this one to that one, you should hopefully be able to see that there's a lot more circular reach and a lot more where my little scribe go. Oops, dropped it. A lot more of a burr up here on the top of this one than there is on the top of that one. This is kind of worn flat, or this one here still has a nice curve to it. So I'm hoping that, that nice curve will be enough to fix our issues. To fix it, we're going to have to go someplace I've never gone before. We're going into the trigger assembly, because I have to remove the trigger assembly in order to get to the cutoff lever. I think, actually, I may not. I may not after all. Let's try and do it without removing the tri trigger assembly. So, I'm going to take this screwdriver right here. Move this screw. And before I let that pop off, I'm going to flip this over because I want to see. See this spring right here? That spring is part of the system. We got to make sure that the new spring, which came with it right here, goes in that spot right there. Now, the gears kind of fell out of my hand when I was doing that. So let's put them someplace safe. This is our anti reversal latch. Put it over here in my bowl. This is my bevel gear. I'm going to take it with its bushing or bearing. I think this is a this one here. I believe it's just a bushing. No, it's a bearing. Maybe. Set that off to the side. Let me go ahead and take out. This bearing, this wanting to fall out too. This bearing goes with the sector gear. Put it with it, and we're going to go ahead and take off the spur gear as well. The reason I wanted to keep the bearings with the gears is because I want to make sure I'm keeping my shims all with the gears too, so everything stays together in the right spot. Now that I have this piece loose. I'm going to take my spring, my little scribe here, 
pull it up and off and drop it in my bowl. Now that's moving freely. And here, I should be able to take out my old cutoff lever and pull it straight forward out of this little gap, which I did. Now I'm going to compare that to my new one. There's a whole lot more burr left on the new one than the old one. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that that will be enough to fix this issue. It could be a quicker, easier fix than I thought it was going to be. So, I don't know if y'all got to see that or not. I compared the burrs of the two. Right here, you can see that the silver one, the old one, is kind of flattened out. You can actually see that little lip there now on it while the newer one has a bit more roundiness to it. So, hopefully, hopefully, that is going to solve our problem. Now, putting it back in here, i to manipulate this to go in the same exact way the other one did. Push that down. And it came with a new screw, so we're going to go ahead and use that new screw and save the old one for something some other time when I lose a screw and tightening it down may not be a bad idea to, I, don't know, I don't think that needs to reach it's plenty loose on there now I'm going to flip this back over again and we also have a new spring that came in so get that new spring, see if it'll focus on it here. There we go, good focus going again. Take that new spring, slip it in right there, and then use my handy dandy little stride. Put it down. And in position. And now that is good. So when we move our safety will go it's all the way forward is in a safe position halfway semi-auto and all the way back no, not going to move there we go all the way forward safe position you can see this little arm here came up that blocks the trigger I'm going to you it's in safe now we're in semi this cutoff lever still in the up raised position now we're going to go back into full and the bullet pops it completely out of the way. Semi, safe, semi, and full auto. Hopefully, hopefully, this is going to solve all of our issues. Now comes the joy of trying to piece everything back together. Starting with the spur gear. I find it's generally best to put the spur gear in first. It's going to go right here, my little hair in the way. It's the only one that's bushing stayed on the other side of the plate for the gearbox. Trying to run our wires here a little better. Next, after the spur gear, take and I'm going to put in, let's go ahead and do this right now. This is of course our cylinder. I've already looked at it and overall the cylinder still has pretty good compression. The teeth are a little bit worn but not terrible. Um, and considering the level of gun this one is, I'm really impressed because I know this has had a ton of BBs fired through it over the years. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with how this held up. However, if you take a look, I take this, tap it off, Take a look at that. Look at all that play we have right there. That's horrible. We're losing a lot of compression around the nozzle. To solve that, I bought a new nozzle. I think it cost eight bucks, thereabouts. I bought a Lonex right here. 
And this nozzle has a built-in O-ring. The other nozzle did not. Try this new nozzle, put it on, and boom. Now, that's a whole lot better feeling. Now, see this little lip? One of the things I had to learn by trial and error, your tappet arm, which ended up, where did it go? Right here, has to sit in that lip. And that causes that nozzle to move backwards and forwards. When it moves backwards, it allows a BB to load up into the chamber. When it moves forward, it seats the BB and, and it makes a seal so that the air gets all locked into the well, barrel when it fires and pushes the BB forward. So, with that there, we're going to take and go ahead and put this piece back into place. I can get it around the trigger assembly here. There we go. Being very careful. My long dead grandmother used to say, tell my dad all the time, if you have to force it, you're doing something wrong. You should never have to force anything when working on aerosol equipment. So that's in place. This spring I know was not hooked yet. I'm going to come back and do that shortly. But before I do, I want to get other stuff going. I'm going to take my sector gear, make sure I'm keeping my bushings and bearings where they belong. I'm going to put it, or I should have put this in before I did the tappet arm. Put my sector gear. Into place right there. Yeah, should have done it before the tappet arm. I gotta take the tappet arm back out. I got that repainted seat just so. Alright, sector gear is good. Except somewhere we lost these. So these, these, I'm pretty sure go right here. Now, we have the bevel gear. But before I put the bevel gear in, I have to put in the cutoff arm. My own gun a while back, I ruined the spur gear, that middle gear set, because I thought that the cutoff arm interacted with these. It does not a cutoff lever. Cutoff lever works on these gears right here. So I've got to get this. These little stripes are priceless in the right position. And then take and put this in the right position as well. Oops, wait a minute. That bottom bushing's on upside down, so it's not going in the hole. Now we can get it in there, right? And boom. Everything is in place except for this. And I also have to go ahead and put the spring in place for this one. Unfortunately, this is not a quick change spring setup, so we've got to go ahead and get it latched in to where it belongs before we put the other half of the gearbox on. And that makes things a whole lot more interesting than trying to fit it all together. I tuck my wires down right here. Make sure Cut off arm still in place. It is. And now comes the fun part. Trying to get everything lined up. Now to do this, I like to use really fine little punches. They allow me to get in there move these pieces. Oh, dang it. And the black wire pop out. So now we got to get all out again.
Cut off arm popped out when we did that. Cut off lever. And we rerun the wires again. Black wires go like that. Red wire goes like this. And we're going to try again to get everything lined up. A little lift on this front part of my gearbox just to try and keep the pressure off that cylinder. And let's see what we got here. I took here actually go there because if you look, this is too high, that's too low. So, even though we had a perfect fit that time, I had to take it all back apart again. Not bushing into shims. Taking it back apart. These shims off of here. Put them onto here. I'm going to go ahead and see when I did that, the bushings came out. We're going to go ahead and set them back where they were. It's a whole lot easier to line up the bushings than it is to line up the individual stems on the gears. And now, I'm going to try to put it all back together again. hold it in place. I'll get a few screws here to start it. I'm just taking a quick peek. Everything seems to be sealing up nicely. The safety lever all seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Here goes a few doesn't go cute. I think we're in good shape. Spring up here is lined up good. Alright, so we'll start putting in the rest of our screws. Now we could take and put all this together, put it all back in the gun test it, but that would be bad if it didn't work. It would be a waste of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick test by simply putting this much of it back together, screwing the grip onto it, and putting the motor plate up against it, put the motor up, up against it, and plug it in, and see if we solve a semi-auto problem. Here, sure. everything looks good. It's left over. I'm going to take the grip. The grip's right here. It had two screws in it. One of them stayed in place. One did not. The red wire goes through your front medium-sized hole, right here. The black wire goes through the black medium-sized hole. It's you know, it's easier to run the black wire through first because it's much shorter. The red wire is longer give me more to manipulate. And line up the groove just like that. From here. Get one screw in that. One screw is already in. That's going to make it easy. The other screw, I'm going to get my big long honking magnetic screwdriver to tighten down. It'll hold it in place better. I'm going to line it up in the hole. You can 
see in the side view, using a big old honking magnifying glass, it has a light on it to see what I'm doing, because it allows me to see better. But my old eyes get me white right on my target, and it allows me to zoom in and see the finer details of the little bitty parts in this gun. Alright, that's on. Now, the motor. Take a look. This motor here has a. Most of the other ones I've worked on say plus right up here. That just has red. That red means that that's your hot side. When you're running your motor cables in here, the reason your red one's longer is because it's got to have further to go. So it's going to take and push in on the side here. The black goes on the left side. And then comes the fun challenge of getting it all to fit. That red spot I showed you, that goes to the front. And I do believe we have it in there good. I'll plug in my negative. And we'll put in the positive first for this one. This little dandy and this little shiny silver shim is sat right here on top of the motor. So I'm going to balance that shim in place. I'm going to come off camera for a minute so I can get it nice and level there. I'll take my motor plate right here. See if I can get everything to line up just right. Look, oh, and I lost that little shim. I think my red wire just isn't long enough for some reason. Put my shim back in my bowl. Use my handy dandy scribe. And somehow my red wire got bound up. Maybe in this gun, the red wire is supposed to go on the front. Try that and see what happens. Ah, oh, shoot. My old gearhead came off. My head was stripped out on this when I started working on it. I had to go by Leviathan Tactical and bomb another spare screw from them. I got three of them. This is the original, which is a pretty solid match to that one. I'll put it in place as well. And let's plug in a battery to it. Let's see if we solved our problem. There's the battery. Take these spare screws and put them back in our bag so they're out of the way. Alright, on safe, nothing happens. Right there should be semi. Doing exactly what it's supposed to do and full auto. Beautiful. We have fixed that problem. I'm well pleased with how this is going. Now that it's working, I have to pull that motor plate back off and the motor back out because that's a requirement for putting the gun back together. I'm not going to show you all, all that part on the video because I've got other videos showing how we piece it all back together. But I think that that one should be a good start 
to show you what needs to be done on how to fix that type of a problem. All said and done, I am well pleased. As we said in the beginning of the video, we had two issues. One was it wasn't firing on semi-auto. The other was that it wasn't was only firing at 293 feet per second. So we worked on fixing both of those by changing the cutoff lever and by changing the um, nozzle. You can see now, go a few every time, get a nice consistent rate of fire. I really oh, ran out of BBs there. Good rate of fire, most of the time around 350. This gun's not modified with a good hop up or um, R hop or anything, so all said and done, I'm pretty happy with that.